Hearts will never be practical until they can be made unbreakable, said the Wizard of Oz. But I still want one, replied the Tin Woodman. Your heart, it keeps you alive, it makes you love, it makes you human. In just one year, it will beat over 40 million times without time off for rest or good behavior. A pretty impressive piece of machinery, you might agree. No wonder the Tin Man wanted one so much. And like many things in life, he may have wished for an extra big heart like the one we see at the end of the yellow brick road. He'd be forgiven for imagining a big heart to be a good thing, extra caring, extra compassionate, and if the Tin Man were scientifically inclined, more efficient at doing its job of pumping blood around the body. Unfortunately, for the one in 250 people living life with a big heart, the reality is very different. A heart muscle condition called dilated cardiomyopathy causes the heart to get bigger and actually less effective at doing its job of pumping blood around the body. You might have heard of this condition recently as George Michael was found to have died from it. For people living with this condition, they have to take medicines every day to stop their lungs filling up with fluid that their big and stretched hearts can't pump around their body. It remains the leading cause of heart transplants worldwide, and unfortunately, one in five people will be dead within five years of their diagnosis. So we urgently need better ways to identify who will develop complications of the disease. Unfortunately, in half of cases, we don't know why the condition develops in the first place, but recent research has identified abnormalities in a giant gene, the second biggest gene, called Titan, in about a quarter of patients with the condition. Curiously, however, the journey along the yellow brick road is not straightforward, and not everybody who has the abnormal gene goes on to develop the condition. So your genes are inherited from your parents. But one theory is that factors in your environment affect how different genes behave differently in different people. My research uses really detailed pictures of the heart from MRI scans, like the ones you see in the slides, together with detailed clinical information and genetic data in over 500 people with the condition to understand more about the effects of variations in the Titan gene on the heart. We find weight differences in the hearts of people with the abnormal gene and without, which gives us clues as to how the disease might have developed. We find people with the abnormal gene have a three-fold increased risk of abnormal and dangerous heartbeats early in their disease course. And finally, we find that people who have the abnormal gene, who drink more than the government's weekly sensible limits, have a much more damaged heart than you'd expect from just having the gene alone or drinking alcohol alone. So in summary, this research provides evidence for how genetic data can be used to tailor the care for people with this condition and hopefully lead to improved survival for patients with this devastating heart disease. Thank you very much.